Hello everybody, this is Gamer Gar. Welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For the purposes of today's video, I'm going to bring you through some really cool automated and managing techniques you can utilize in this game. As we all know, when you get into the end game in Stardew Valley, it can become very difficult to automate a lot of the processes, and it can also become very difficult to find time to do other things other than processing materials that you have accumulated. So let's jump into the video and let's have some fun. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so when Stardew Valley content is released, which is every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday, and we also do live streams every Friday at 9 o'clock British Standard Time, you will be notified. As you can see, the channel has now tons of Stardew Valley content for you to enjoy. When it comes to end game farms like this, you can have a whole lot of processes going on at any one time. Let's take a look at the crops that we have here at the moment. We have a nice Junimo hut set up here, and these Junimos can be toggled on or off. Obviously, when they are toggled on, they will come out of the hut and they will collect all the crops for us, which means that the farming process is now automated. You can't, unfortunately, automate every process in this game. For example, when it comes to collecting syrups or tars from these tappers, you have to collect these manually. So if you have big tree farms like this with heavy tappers attached or even regular tappers, it can be quite time consuming running around your farm every couple of days trying to harvest all of these resources. Let's take a look at the greenhouse here for example. The greenhouse is something that can't really be automated either. You have to come in here every few days, especially if you have regrowable crops, and harvest them. And this can take up a lot of your time as well. Despite the fact that there is many machines you can get for this game and there is many magical items you can get for this game that will automate a lot of the processes for you, there is still a great portion of this game that you cannot automate. So let's have a look at the greenhouse here. We're just picking up our lovely inch fruit at the moment. It doesn't take that long, especially if you use speed buffs. Let's take a look at the sheds here filled up to the top of crystallariums. We've got diamond crystallariums. We even have jade crystallariums for staircases, diamonds for triple shot expressos, of course. These crystallariums can really be automated. You have to harvest these every couple of days when these minerals spawn. Otherwise, you're losing out on valuable resources, especially if you love your skull cavern runs. Let's take a look at the kegs here. Now, these kegs are connected to hoppers. So, the process is a little bit better. All you have to do is harvest these kegs. And the hoppers will automatically load up the next ancient fruit into the keg and you can just take the ancient fruit wines no problem at all but you still have to harvest all of the wines out of these kegs so even if your farm is an end game farm like this what can happen is that most of your day can be taken up with processing and more processing and harvesting all of the resources and selling them it could take the fun out of the game let's take a look at the quarry here we have the quarry set up with another tapper farm to get even more syrups you can actually become a syrup farmer in this game if you wanted to. You could spec into syrup using the foraging profession and you could sell all these to make a, a really nice profit. It syncs up quite well with the heavy tappers because the heavy tappers will produce syrups twice as fast. And this isn't the only place that we have huge tree farms set up. The bat house area is a huge area and we have that whole area taken up with trees that also generate syrups and the reason why this is done is because we have done so much testing over the years with this farm we wanted to see how much money you could make by selling syrups but we also wanted to see how much time you would have on your hands if you maximized each area to its full potential now let's talk about ginger island it's basically a second farm not as big as your original farm but it's still plenty big that you can put tons of crops on it you can put tons of trees on it we have banana trees here we have mango trees. You can, of course, put other trees on it too from Stardew Valley. But just to keep this farm type a bit more simplified, we just have the ginger island trees planted. If you take a look here as well, we also have a house. Inside the house, we have more processing machines. More importantly, take a look at the trees we have set up with heavy tappers. We've got one of each tree type, and this serves as a reminder that when these tappers are ready, the tree farms back in Stardew Valley are also ready. So the main thing you should take away from this video is the element of synchronization. Synchronize all your processing machines on Ginger Island with the ones you have in Stardew Valley. That way, if you're playing on Ginger Island 
and your kegs are ready, you will then know that the kegs are also ready back on Ginger Island. If your tappers are ready on Ginger Island, they will be ready back in Stardew Valley. If any other process machine is ready, such as the Crystallariums, or even the garden pots, they will also be ready back in Stardew Valley. So try to synchronize everything up so that you're not wasting time constantly going back and forth, back and forth, trying to make ends meet. Synchronization process will simplify things for you. If we take a look at the crystallariums here, I can see that the diamond is ready and the jade is ready. So all I have to do is simply teleport back to Stardew Valley and I will be able to go into those sheds and harvest those diamonds and harvest those jades no problem at all. The trick with the garden pots are to get deluxe retaining soil. You just have to go to the ginger island shredder here, purchase the recipe. It only costs 50 cinder shards. You can get that in a couple of days from farming the volcano. And it's very cheap. Stone, fiber and clay is all you need to make a deluxe retaining soil. You put it into your garden pot and that is it. You won't have to put it into the garden pot ever again. It is a 100% chance to irrigate your crops after you harvest the crops. It's super effective on regrowable crops because the crop will then regrow infinite amount of times every few days for you. The hoppers can be gotten from Key's Secret Walnut Rule. Now you can purchase the hoppers for only 10 Key Gems, but my advice is to get the recipe and just stock up on hardwood and radioactive bars so you can make hundreds of these hoppers, set them up with all your processing machines and just fill up the hoppers then with the resources that you want to process further. This will save you a ton of time, especially when it comes to getting the resource, putting it into the keg, and then having to put the resource somewhere else when you're finished with it. The hopper does all that for you. Fair enough, the hopper uses up space, but the space is definitely worth it because you're saving so much time in the process. Also, I forgot to mention that with the Ginger Island farm, we're growing ancient fruit on the farm. So when that ancient fruit is harvested, we know then that we have to go to the greenhouse to also harvest it. It's also worth noting as well that you can get the farm computer off Demetrius for the special orders quest. And you can build as many loads as you want and you can put those anywhere you want. And the farm computer will tell you how much hay your silos have when and when your greenhouse can be harvested. So that is another huge time saver that you should incorporate into your super busy farm. It's also worth noting too that if you choose the mushrooms over the bat cave, these mushrooms can be harvested every single day. And that is an absolute guarantee regardless of what season it is, regardless of what weather condition you have, you can harvest those mushrooms all of the time. So you'll also notice here that this farm is set up with a lot of machines that auto process, the fishing ponds auto process, all I have to do here is make sure the fish are happy by doing a couple of quests. That's it then forever. These fish will produce items every few days. The power pylons will produce battery packs for me when I get uh, stormy weather. And of course, we have the lovely beehives that will generate honey for me every few sunny days as well. And if you've noticed that in the very center, I have um, a flower set up there, which will enhance the honey for me. And that changes every time a season comes into play. Next up, let's talk about farming professions, how it can affect automation and managing your farm. The artisan profession is always a no-brainer. A 40% increase to all artisan goods is something that most players will choose. And this should be chosen when you are selling artisan goods and artisan goods only. If you're selling other items that don't fall in the artisan good category, you should look at the professions, you should look to see if there is a perk available that will increase the value of that item before you sell it to maximize your profits. If you're not selling artisan goods, you should immediately go to the Statue of Uncertainty, choose a different profession so you can make more money. So I just went to the statue here and I'm gonna change the farming profession. I'm gonna show you a great tip here that's gonna make automation better. This time, instead of going with Tiller, we're gonna go with the rancher profession, animal goods worth 20% more. But more importantly, after we select this profession, we're gonna go with shepherd. Now, not only will this befriend sheep much faster, but sheep will produce wool faster. A sheep with max out friendship and a sheep with five hearts will give you wool every single day. So this is basically a fully automated process. And you can do this with all the animals. You can put down an auto grabber, put down an auto pedal, and put down a heater so they don't get cranky in winter when it gets cold. And all you need to make sure of is that your silos have enough hay to feed these animals. And you can just sleep on this process for a month, for a year, for multiple years, go to the auto grabber, collect the loot, and then just sell it. If you want to process it further into artisan goods, do that. 
respec into artisan and then sell it. If you want to get auto grabbers, you can easily purchase them off Marnie for 25,000 gold. You can also get them in the Skull Cavern in Treasure Floors. If you want to get auto petters, you can purchase them in the Georgia Mart if you went to Georgia route. If you didn't and you went to Community Center route, then you can just get them in the Skull Cavern in Treasure Floors. They're common enough if you spam the Treasure Floors. The last thing to notice are these small mini obelisks. Set them up on your farm, put one on top, one at the bottom. And I have obelisks here set up. So this is the Ginger Island obelisk. So I can basically use the mini obelisk, teleport to Ginger Island, and I'm at my farm immediately. No time taken up at all. When you're on Ginger Island, you can unlock an obelisk that will take you right back to your farm. And we can use that. It'll take us right back to the farm, which eliminates time and that's the most important thing in this game it's time so if you have a setup like this it's very easy to automate most of your farm and more importantly to manage the two farms you are given it's also worth noting too that once you assemble 100 hardwood don't forget to use your horse because you can get around a lot faster on the farm making it much easier to manage so i'm going to leave the video there i hope you enjoyed it as per usual, I will upload the next Stardew Valley video in the next few days, so stay tuned for that. And as always, I hope you have a great day. Bye for now.